Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today. I finally have another video. Yes, I've been still making things. Um, I just haven't been on YouTube as much. I've actually been streaming on Twitch, doing games, and just drawing streams. So if you guys kind of miss seeing me as much as you normally do with the weekly or bi-weekly videos or whatever I was doing, because I can't even remember, <laughs> um, you will find me on Twitch. I've been normally streaming on Tuesdays, but I've been trying to do like two times a week. Haven't managed to do it consistently, but we've been very consistent with doing Tuesday streams. So yeah, if you want to stop by, it'd be a lot of fun. Normally it's pretty relaxing. Sometimes it gets a little chaotic. Ah, don't you throw stuff at me. Oh, you can't reach me. Ah. I can't reach you either. I guess I gotta come down. Ah! Oh, you have friends. Why do you have so many friends? You don't look ready for this battle, Sophie. That's okay, neither am I. Come here, come here. I don't have Sam, why am I chasing you? Sophie, hold on. Oh, no, 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 no! I was healing! <laughs> I have one health, I'm dead. Anyways, for today's video, we're going to be doing kind of a mermaid hybrid with a tiger cub. I thought it'd be really fun and decorative and I could make it purple. <laughs> Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so I think I'm going to start on the clay pieces first for our mer tiger, And I'm going to work on the claws right now. So normally you would think mer tiger, you'd have just the front paws, but I kind of want to have the back paws. I think it'd be really cute. And then to just turn the tail into a mer tail. So I know it's not exactly mermaid, but it, I think it'll look really cute this way. So we're going to be making enough claws for all four feet. The clay that I'm going to be using for the claws is going to be my epoxy sculpt. So when I'm done, I won't have to bake these. Uh, main reason for this is they're tiny and they're kind of dangly, so I don't want them to be super fragile and this clay is really strong once it's cured. So I'm going to set these off to the side and we're going to start on our clay face. Okay, so for making the clay head, we need to get a good base to work with first. So I'm going to start with a lump of tin foil. I normally attach this to a piece of glass so I have something to hold on to while working. So I just have a little bit of hot glue which will melt away later when we bake it. Then to start with the clay, I'm just going to roll out a thin layer and we can drape this over our tin foil and then we can start attaching lumps of clay to this to figure out where sections of the face need to be. I highly recommend looking up references when you're doing weirdly shaped faces. Like I'm really not that good with cat faces so I looked at a lot of references for this. Plus, I wanted to look at references of cubs because we are doing a baby. Their proportions of their face are going to be slightly different than adults. So I'm going to get my basic shape figured out. Um, once I like the shape, I'll see what extra clay is built up around the base of the head and remove that mainly so that the head won't be super heavy. And then we're going to figure out where our eyes are going to go. So I have these really cute glass eyes that I think will look really cool with all the other purple colors that I want to use. I'm going to place them on the face where I want them positioned, double check to make sure that they are even, and then I'm going to start building up clay around this. So I'm going to start adding clay to um, the brow and then the cheeks and just kind of building up those muscles until we start adding clay closer to the glass eyes, which would be more of the eyelids. Now before I start refining the shape around the eyes and getting those eyelids figured out, I want to roughly sketch out the shape of the head so I have a better idea of um, how everything is going to work together. So I'm going to sketch out where the nose is going to be and figure out where the mouth is going to be on the snout. 
Um, a lot of times with the bottom jaw, I like to mark out where the upper lip is going to go and then remove that clay and re-add it. I feel like adding the jaw like this just kind of helps lay it out better than to use the clay that's currently there. But yeah, I'm going to get everything kind of marked out and then we can go back and start refining the features of the eyes and then we'll continue adding more details to everything else. Once I have my clay laid out, I can then start smoothing and refining the shape and focusing on getting that eyelid to give me the expression in the eye that I want. Again, I like things being very even, so I go back and forth between the two eyes to try and make them match as best as possible. I find it's a lot easier to do this than to do one eye completely and then finish the other eye. Now one detail that I won't be adding is going to be a fur texture. So I won't be sculpting this, but I am going to be adding a texture because we're going to be adding fake fur to this by gluing it. And I like to give a rough bumpy texture so that the glue has something to latch onto a lot better than just a smooth surface. So I'm going to get everything kind of like bumpied up with my texture brush and then I'm going to continue adding more detail to the nose and the lips and just all the other sections that probably won't get fur on them. Now I wanted to add a little bit of extra like fun detail to the face so it wasn't just a plain tiger cub face. So when I was making the claws I made these little decorative things to go on the head and um, these are fully cured by now so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take them, make sure that I like where they're going to go first and then I'm going to just push them right into the face. I'm figuring kind of the very top around where the ears would go would look really cute. So I'm going to get those in place. I'll clean up the edges around the base of them so that the clay is nice and smooth there. And then I'm also going to make sure that I have holes for when we add the ears. So I'm just going to push right behind these to make sure there's holes there. These holes are going to be where we're going to attach our ears once we have our ears put together. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how the clay head is. So I'm going to put this in the oven for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then once our clay pieces are done baking in the oven and have cooled, we can start painting them. I'm actually going to start painting our claws first and then we'll move on to painting the face. The claws are pretty simple though, I'm just going to be doing a pearlescent pink. I thought that would look really cute with all the other colors that I had planned with the fur. Now with the clay head, since the colors that I want to use for the fur are mainly purple, I'm going to be primering our clay face with a purple. We'll have to adjust it to try and get closer to the color of the fur fabric, but for now I'm just doing a basic purple that's kind of close. I'm then going to add some pink highlights and then I'm going to start mixing up colors to more match that fur fabric. I'm going to add a little bit of white here and there to add a bit of a highlight and then I'm also going to go in and add more pink to the nose to separate it from the rest of the face and then I'm just going to mess around with the highlights and stuff. Um, with the little antenna things, at first you saw me painting them pink, 
I'm really not sure yet in the process of this what color I'm going to go with, but eventually I decided to have them green. Now most of my detailing is going to be around the eyes and the snout because those sections won't be furred. So I'm not going to really mess around with adding too much detailing to like the cheekbones or something like that because you're not going to see it. Um, but after messing around and getting it to where I liked the basic look, I'm then going to make sure everything's dried and then I'm going to peel the paint away from the glass eyes. Now one other thing that I want to do to the face is I want to add glitter because I feel like glitter would work really well with our mermaid theme and the colors that I'm using. So I'm going to be using technically not a glue, more of a glaze because I find this works better for adding glitter to it. So what you'll do is you'll take your glaze and you will paint over the section that you want glittered. You'll sprinkle your glitter on, let it dry, and then to make sure that the glitter does not fall off, because a lot of times the glitter does not like to stay on glue, I like to glaze over the glitter to really lock it in. I find this works really well and it also doesn't fog up the glitter so it still stays really glittery. Now one thing I used to do with adding glitter to pieces was use resin because it's really strong as well, but I found when I use resin and sprinkle over and let it cure, it tends to get like the texture of sandpaper, which is kind of unpleasant, but doing it this way it's nice and smooth still. And both ways work really well, it's just kind of your preference on um, if you want a rough texture on your piece or not. Plus, you don't have to wait for resin to cure super long with uh, the glaze. The glaze just takes maybe an hour or two. Okay, so our clay pieces are done, and now I'm going to start working on getting the body sewn. So for our pattern, I've left the body very similar to a normal tiger cub, but I've thickened that tail so we can add a layered mermaid effect to the tip of the tail. I, I really like how this kind of looked, so I'm going to have multiple layers to the tail. And then I have a piece laid out for the belly, which I think I'm going to have this a sequin fabric. And then I also have little sections off to the side for how to make the paws, because I want to have the toes sewn individually. Now the first piece that I want to work with fabric wise is going to be the belly. Like I said, I'm going to be using a sequent fabric, so I'm going to get that cut out. And then what I want to do to this is I want to add a gem to the chest. Now you're probably wondering how I'm going to be gluing this gem over the sequence, and the answer is I'm not. What we're going to be doing is we're going to take our gem, flip the fabric so we're on the backing, and we're going to sketch out the shape of our gem. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the side with the sequence and we're going to start removing the sequence within that circle that we have sketched out. Now when you're doing this, make sure that you are cutting the sequence itself and not the thread that is sewn into the fabric because if you cut the thread instead of the sequence, you're going to have more sequence come out. So this will keep all the other sequence that you want to stay there, staying there. This is time consuming but really well worth it. So we're going to get that cleaned up and then I'm going to use my fabric glue to glue my gem in place and kind of frame it with a few other gems. Okay, so for the body and the legs, I'm going to be using my purple fur fabric. I've got all the pieces cut out and pinned together. So for like the back, we're going to be just sewing down the back section of the body all the way from the neck to the tail. And then for the feet, on all of them, we're just going to be sewing down the front section so we can flip them right side out. Once I have the fabric for the body put together, I'm then going to take that and the belly piece and we're going to start gluing it around the base of the neck. I'm going to start with the sequin section first. I'm going to get that attached to the kind of chin neck section. And then we're going to take our uh, fur fabric and go all the way around the rest of the head. 
You'll want to let that dry a little bit and then we're going to start stuffing and closing up going down the sides of the sequence connecting the fur fabric to it. So we're going to be doing this all the way until we get to the end of the tail and then we can get our tail started. So for the tail, I have it made out of three layers, um, and we're going to be using a minky fabric. So I've got these all set up for us to sew and then flip them right side out. So I'm going to use my sewing machine, get that all dealt with, cut them out, flip them. We're going to sew these together, and then we're going to sew them to the end of the tail. At this point, our cub looks more like a worm than a mermaid, so we should probably start on the legs. So we already have the main fabric section like put together, but we need to do the feet. So we're going to take those claws and we're going to make um, some toes for them and put the feet together. So the toes, I've got them all sketched out on the fabric. I've got the fabric all pinned together. We're just going to sew them all at once and cut them out. Just make sure to leave both ends open so you have a hole for the claw to attach and a hole to stuff it and add it to the foot. So I'm going to get all of these done and then we're going to take our claws and we're going to push them in place, glue them to the fabric, stuff our toes and start sewing these toes together. So I thought it would look cute if I did the middle toes the light green and then the outer toes the white. So I'm going to get all of these put together and then the underside of the foot is this white pink fur fabric. I'm going to attach the toes to that. I actually kind of forgot about a pattern section which was going to be the top of the foot and I just started sewing these all to the leg fabric without realizing that I completely forgot about this piece, but it still worked out quite well. It's just a little bit shorter, but I kind of like how it looks because it looks more babyish with shorter legs. So yeah, I got the toes sewn together, I've added them to the fabric for the legs, and then I just need to stuff and close these up. Now you'll notice that we haven't made like a wire frame for this piece and that's because I just didn't really feel like having a frame to hold it up. I figured he's a little baby, he can be kind of floppy. So what we're going to do with the legs is we're just going to sew them in place. So I'm going to attach the front legs and the back legs. And then he really doesn't look like a tiger because he doesn't have stripes. So I thought it'd be really cute to use this other sequent fabric that has like patterns in it and cut sections out and lay them onto the body and sew them in place. I know they don't really look like stripes, but I thought they would look really pretty. So I'm going to end up doing that. It didn't take too, too long, but I did take my time so that the uh, sequent laid flush against the fur fabric.
And then once I have all of my stripes sewn into place, I'm then going to start working on his face. So first thing I need for his face are going to be his ears. So the backing of his ear is going to be our purple fur fabric, and then the inside is going to be a suede. So what we're going to do is we're going to pin those fabrics together, use the pattern that I have sketched out. I've figured out a good size to match his head, and we're just going to sew along that, cut these out, and then we can flip them right side out. And then I want to add a wire frame to the ears so they hold their shape better. So I'm going to take a thinner gauge wire, but this is a little too thin, so I'm going to kind of double up on it, make sure it's the correct length to go along the edge of the ear, and then I'm going to stitch it in place. Once we have that stitched in place at the very end of the ear, I'm going to take the wires sticking out and wrap them together and make like a little section that will insert into the clay. So once those are put together, we're just going to add glue into those little holes that we have on the head and insert the ears. We'll make sure those are nice and dry and then we can start adding fur to the face. I'm going to start with that white fur fabric that has the pink tips and I'm going to use this to fur his chin and his cheeks. So I've got fabric cut out and I'm just going to use my fabric glue to attach it to the face. Uh, for the top of his head, I want to add a little bit of the purple fur, and then I'm also going to add a bit more of this white fur kind of in his ears. Um, and then I thought it would be really cute to actually take some of the sequent stripes and add some to the face to go with the rest of the body. So I made two really small stripes, and we're going to glue that kind of on his snout. Okay guys, and here is our little mer tiger. I had so much fun making him. It was a lot of work adding all the like sequins and stuff, but I think the effect looks really cute. I'm gonna have to do stuff like this uh, more often. I just wanted to try something different. Also, I had fun making him flappy. I haven't done flappy dolls in a while. Mostly they have wire frames and stuff, and he's more cuddly this way. And of course his little tail. <laughs> Now this little guy is for sale. I have him up on my website, so if you guys are interested in buying him, you can check the links down below. And then just another reminder, if you guys want to hang out in a live stream, I am usually live on Tuesdays, um, trying to do more days, but haven't figured out a good schedule for it yet. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!